We're in chapter 5. I think this is going to be another important, most important lesson. Why must saints suffer? Why must saints suffer? And notice the title, Why Must They Suffer? Why is it that God requires saints to suffer? I think one of the greatest controversies in the body of Christ is the issue of suffering. There are many doctrines that forbid either even the thought of suffering of saints being the will of God. Most doctrines tell you that you're not appointed to suffer. You, you, you're not going to suffer. Praise the Lord. Jesus suffered for all of us. Amen. But there are so many scriptures that seem to be advocates of suffering for the people of God in this dispensation. Now, when we went back into the old dispensation, the old covenant, Suffering was not a part of the contract unless they disobeyed God. Amen? Unless they disobeyed God. God said, you're going to prosper. You're going to prosper on every hand. Glory to God. Your children are going to prosper. Amen? You'll be the head, not the tail, and all of those things. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm going to bless you going in, bless you coming out. I'm going to make your enemies scatter. Praise you, Jesus. Amen? So suffering was not a part of that covenant unless they disobeyed. Isn't that right? But that's not so in the new covenant. In the new covenant, glory to God. It's not so, and we, and we need to find out why is, it, why is it not so. But I can tell you this, it, is, it has to do with the way we were redeemed. Amen. Glory to God. The cost of our redemption. Hallelujah. But the Lord, who is faithful to give wisdom to those who seek. <clears throat> Hallelujah. But the Lord, who is faithful to give wisdom to those who seek him for it, has opened my eyes to see suffering of the sons like I never saw it before. If I'm successful in relaying this revelation to you, then you'll never be resentful of the things you must face in this life for Christ's sake. Let's go to St. Luke 14. A little recap here. 14 and 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. All right. Mm-hmm. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Mm -hmm. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Okay. Now, a recap of this scripture gives us four criteria here. Number one, you got to hate your mother, father, sister, brother, etc. Humanity. He's saying, glory to God, you must not allow humanity to have a greater influence in your life than Christ. You cannot allow any human influence, anything, glory to God, anyone rather, to be more influential than Christ is. Number two, you got to hate your own life. Hallelujah. Which simply means you must deny yourself. What is he talking about? That life that you lived in the flesh before, you got to hate that. You got to hate what you were. You got to hate that life and live his life. Come on, are you hearing God? You got to hate that life and live his life. You got to hate that life. Glory to God. You know, you won't stop doing something until you hate it. You're going to have to hate it. As long as you like what you're doing, you're going to always do it. You're going to always do it. You got to come to a place where you hate doing what, you, what you're doing, not because it's adverse even to, 
to you physically or, or whatever, but you've got to come to hate it because God hates it. That, you gotta come, you got to come to hate it because, glory to God, it's an offense to God. Are, are you hearing God? Amen. And, it, and until you hate it for that reason, you're going to continue in it. Glory to God. There are people that have been in relationships. Glory to God. They've been inside of relationships that they might have thought, felt that they were in love with the person that they were shacking up with. But when the word of God came, amen, and, 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 and they heard and faith uh, began to, uh, to be gendered inside, inside of them, they, 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 they began to hate what they were doing. In, amen. They began to hate what they were doing. They, didn't have, they, they, they might not have had a disdain for the person. They might have really cared for the person. But they, they, they found out that this, is, this opposes God. This is an offense to God. So I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not doing it. Praise the Lord. And it became easy to walk out of it. Glory to God. When you hate something because it offends God, that's when you'll quit. Amen. Are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? Then he says, you got to bear your cross. Uh-oh. You got to be willing to suffer. You got to be willing to suffer. You got to be willing to suffer. For Christ's sake. And then he says that you got to count up the cost. Because if you don't finish your course, you'll be lost. Now that's just, he's just, he just giving you the bottom line. He said, you can start out here. Let me, let me tell you something that I just heard the Lord say. This word here will make you. It'll make you. And everybody that's listening to it need to let God make you. Let God form the mindsets in you. Get rid of your own. Get rid of your own ideologies. Let God form your mindset. Let him carve out what you're to think what you're to feel. This word will do it. The word this week will do that. It will make you into what God ordained you to be. But you got to let go of your own life. Your life. You got to be willing to forsake your way of what you think. Are you hearing God? How many of you since you've been sitting here this week have changed the way you think? already you're changing the way you think changing the, and that and when you change the way you think you change the way you feel come on when the, when, the, when you change the way you think you ch you automatically change the way you feel are you hearing God amen so <coughs> God just spoke to me he told me to say that let God shape you let him shape you you don't lose nothing by allowing God to shape you. Let him shape you, even your personality. Let God shape your personality. Let God shape your ideology, what you think, how you see things. Let him show you what they are. Let him, let him be the way you see things. See them from his perspective, not your own. Not your own. See things from God's perspective. Because as long as you hold on to, to what you think is and, and this is the way Christianity ought to be and, and all of that stuff, glory to God, you're going to miss. You're going to miss God's purpose for your life. You're going to miss it. And you'll end up in hell. That's just the bottom line. You won't finish this race. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something that, that nobody in here is going to be able to get around. I need you to ask yourself these questions. Why is it? Uh, now, I'm just going by your testimonies. Why is it that you can't turn the television on, the radio, or visit any other church and hear what you heard this week? 
Think about it. Somebody asked me the other day, he said, Doc, have you heard this preached anywhere? I've, I've, been, I've, been, I've been in God a lot of years, and I have never heard salvation preached like this. Never, ever. Come on, Mark, have you? Never. I've never heard it. You can't turn the TV on and hear it. You can't turn the radio on and hear it. You can't get on the Internet and hear it. You don't hear it. You know why? Let me tell you why you don't hear it. And this is, this is nothing but the simple, unadulterated truth. The reason you don't hear it is because God does not operate outside of his own boundaries. The boundaries he set for the church, he operates in them. And he said the mystery of Christ was given to the apostles. That's what the scriptures say. And, and the reason that you don't hear other, you, sometimes you hear like a bit or a piece. But you realize after you continue to listen that they don't have, something is missing. Something is missing. You know what's missing? What you learned this week? Perspective. Perspective is what's missing. And perspective unravels the mystery. God has to give you the perspective of scripture. He has to give you that perspective. And once you got that perspective, now you can see. The, 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 the scriptures, they make sense now. How many of you, glory to God, since you've been in here th this week, amen, you, you, every, every time a message comes, you can just think of so many scriptures now. Say, oh, I know, I know what that means. Oh, that means this. Oh, oh, wow, scriptures I haven't even mentioned. Uh, they come into you, aren't they? That's revelation. That's revelation, honey. That's what happens when God sets the perspective. Now, now, it all makes sense. It starts to make sense. And you know what? When it starts to make sense, you see the simplicity of it that you would never have seen without the right perspective. Amen? Amen. That's why it's so important to go back through those archives and sit down and look and listen. Okay, okay, I got that. You got to, because I took you systematically. I took you systematically, point by point. I know it, I, I belabored some of them, but amen, it was repetitive, but that was deliberate, because I want to make sure you get it. Amen? Praise the Lord. So let go of your life. Let go of what you think. Say, God, mold me. Mold me and shape me and make me into what I'm supposed to be. Amen. In all the many years that I've been a member of the body of Christ, I've never heard anyone preach these facts as conditions for getting to heaven. Nobody never told us to count up these costs, all this stuff here, that we had to do all of this just to get to heaven. They didn't preach that. At, you don't hear this preach at crusades when they're trying to get people saved. They, they preach Christ is the answer to everything, which he is, glory to God. But you, we got saved without knowing what cost we had to count. Amen. Come on. Because I got saved thinking I'm going to be rich next month. <laughs> Amen. They told me, name it and claim it and all of that stuff. And so I said, well, oh, God Almighty, now the Holy Ghost is going to get me rich. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Many of us made commitments to serve the Lord without even considering we would be required to suffer. Now, definitely they didn't tell us that. No, we thought salvation was going to take us out of suffering. Now, you're telling me that when I come into this, there is suffering ahead, there's suffering down the road? Come on, somebody. Yes, beloved, suffering is a requirement. It is a necessary Somebody say necessary. necessary. Element of salvation. First of all, let, let, let me just cite some scriptures that validate my position. Now, I, I, preachers, glory to God, I love you dearly. My colleagues in the gospel, amen. But I want to cite some scriptures that 
that validate the, the, the stance that I'm taking on this. And I hope you, you ministers of the gospel, esteemed, glory to God, in your calling, amen, just consider these things. Just consider them. Amen. The first one uh, is Philippians 1.29. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. You are charged with more than just belief. Demons believe and tremble. But we are charged to not only believe, but to suffer. Why? For who? For Christ's sake, for his sake. For his, because of him. Listen to, listen to what he said. You are required to suffer because of Christ. Because of Christ you're going to suffer. Because of Christ. Because you're born again. Because you, have, you, have <clears throat> because you are not of this world. You are going to suffer. The world is going to hate you. Are you hearing God? 2 Timothy 3.12 Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, I don't know how much clear he can get. How many? All that will do what? You mean I am living holy? And if and my reward for living holy is to be persecuted. I'm going to suffer simply because I'm holy. Are you hearing God? I'm going to suffer simply because I'm holy. Mm -hmm. You would think I would suffer if I'm unholy. I, well, I know I'm going to suffer then, praise the Jesus. But being holy... Being godly, God says, surely you're going to suffer because of godliness. Read. 2 Timothy 2.12? Yes, 2 okay. Timothy, the second chapter, the 12th verse. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Mm -hmm. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Now... If we suffer, we shall do what? We'll reign with him. If we suffer with Christ, we'll reign with Christ. Right? But if we deny him, now, now I need you to understand what he's saying here now. If we deny him, if we refuse to allow ourselves to be Placed in position to suffer. But some of us do that, you know. A lot of people ducking and dodging suffering. Amen. Some people get in a situation and don't dare say anything because they don't want to be persecuted. A a amen. They don't want to go through anything. They don't want people to look at them funny. And Amen. They don't want people whispering about them or talking about them. Or, amen, may even do some retributive act against them. Amen. Simply because they're Christian. So some people are very qu quiet about their Christianity. Glory to God. They're not, not really particular about everybody knowing. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. But he said, if you deny me, if you don't allow what my father has instructed at that juncture. You see, Jesus was on his way down to, to Jerusalem to, to be crucified. And Peter told him, said, no, 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 no. You can't go down there. They didn't, we're not going to let that happen. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. He said, get behind me, Satan, because thou does always. Hmm? You always say with the things that pertain to men and not the things that pertain to God. Suffering is in my path. For this cause I came into the world. Are you hearing? That's in my path. That's, that's a part of the trip I got to make. It's a part of it. My father has ordained for me to suffer. And if anybody was righteous, it was Christ. Mm -hmm. 
But it was in the path for him, and guess what? It's in the past for us. We are not going to wrestle with this truth. We're going to accept it as fact and move on to see the intent of the Father in, man, in mandating the suffering of his people. We're, going to, we're not going to wrestle with this. We're not wrestling with this. We're not wrestling. Amen. But we're going to see the, the Father's intent. What is his intent? For his people to suffer. Why? Why suffering? It's not a very popular message for the church. The church says, you, you've got to be out your mind. Hallelujah. To preach something like this. Amen. I remember one preacher on television, glory to God, coming into Bible teachers, and, and I uh, had just written the truth about suffering. He read it, and uh, he, said, he said, Dr. Banks, he says, it's the truth. He says, but we cannot preach it because our ratings will go down. And we, they said they had to have $300,000 a month to pay for their television broadcast. That They was on a lot of stations at that time. And he said, he said we, can't, we can't preach that. The, the ratings will go down and no one is going to give the offerings that they would give listening to a message on suffering. Sure did. This was a very famous television evangelist that used to go from city to city. And going to those cities, he used to do prayer and have 10,000 people in, 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 in one building for prayer. He, would go, he said God told him to go from city to city and have these prayer meetings and pull at least 10,000 people together. And he was doing it too. And after that, he went into oblivion. God shut his ministry down, shut the television ministry down. He was removed from his church. He was the pastor of the church. And you don't hear anything about him anymore. And he was a very famous minister at that time. Amen. Glory to God. So we're not going to wrestle with this. The apostle Paul takes us into some more light on this subject. Philippians 3 and 10. And the power that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. That I may know who? Jesus Christ. Amen? That I may know him and the what? power. Paul is testifying here that I am the way that I am so that I can know him. Glory to God. I can know him, but I want to know him how? I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Read on. And the fellowship of his suffering. I got to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. I don't know Christ until I enter into the fellowship of his suffering. I can, I, you know, most of us want to walk in the power of the resurrection. Come on, somebody. Oh, we like that part. But he said it's a requirement. Jesus made it clear that we must suffer. He said we got to carry the, a cross. Amen. Pick up our own cross. There has to be some suffering. And now Paul now makes it very clear that, 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 that the church must enter into the fellowship. Suffering is fellowshipping with Christ. Just like we fellowship with him in, uh, in communion, we, we commune with him, glory to God, in prayer. We got to fellowship. That's a fellowship. But there's a fellowshipping with him in suffering. And it must needs be. It's a necessity. God made that a requirement of the gospel. He made it a requirement of our salvation. It's a requirement of our salvation. Entering into the fellowship of his suffering. Are you hearing God? Because inside of that, we are being made conformable to his death. We show forth the dying of Christ and the resurrection. We don't show forth just his resurrection, 
by walking among men. We've got to show forth the dying of Christ, the sufferings of Christ. How do we do that? When men persecute us and, and there's a reproaches, glory to God, we are dead to that. Come on, somebody. We're showing forth his death, glory to God, the, the fact that we've been baptized into his death. Because when we're reviled, we don't revile. Come on, somebody. When we're reproached, we don't offer reproach. Are you, are you hearing God? We suffer those things. We suffer them. And we suffer them without offense. We don't take it on and, 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 and turn it into iniquity. We don't lay the sin to our offender's charge. Glory to God. We, have, we are suffering. We are suffering it in our own flesh. And we're showing forth the death of Christ. That's what it means when it says reckon the old man is dead. So that when these things come, we don't respond the way we would have done when we were without God. Come on. Before we met Christ. Are you hearing God? So there's a must needs be, glory to God, for these things to happen. It's, it's necessary. It's necessary. Glory to God. I want you to look here at this chart at the bottom of the place. I, I put this here because I said, Lord, look at this. God showed me this. God showed me this. God revealed this to me. Amen. If you take these two scriptures and when you get home, uh, when you get the opportunity, I want you to take these two scriptures and I want you to read them thoroughly. Isaiah 53, 4 through 12. And 1 Peter 2 and 20 through 25. The parallel here is phenomenal. Isaiah 53 starts out saying, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Wait a minute. The Bible says God afflicted Christ. Huh? Said it was God that did it. Hmm? Said God is the one that smote him. Hallelujah. And afflicted him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God did it. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Are you, still, are you seeing this? Look at the 10th verse. Yet it pleased the Lord. Wait a minute, I'm sorry, ninth verse. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. He was holy. He was righteous. But he suffered all of this. For who? For us. For us. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It pleased God to bruise Christ because God knew that after you have made his soul an offering for sin. Because remember, Christ's soul went into hell. Did you remember that? His soul went into hell. The spirit that had him alive in that body, the Holy Ghost, he said, into thine hand I commit my spirit. 
but the soul plummeted into hell for three days and nights. Did not Jesus say the only sign that would be given to this generation is the sign of Jonah? As Jonah stayed in the belly of the whale for three days and nights, so shall the Son of Man stay in the belly of the earth for three days and nights. Glory to God. Hello. His soul went into hell. How do I know it was his soul? Because he prophesied through David and saying, the Lord shall not leave my soul in hell. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. He paid for our soul with his soul. Come on. His soul was tormented so ours wouldn't have to be in hell. Are you hearing God? He went to hell. He went to hell so we wouldn't have to go. Now that's just something. That's just something. Now Jesus, Jesus said, I, I have already gone to hell just so you won't have to go. Don, come on up. This see right here. You okay? Okay. All right. <laughs> That's a shame if we end up in hell. After Jesus has already said, I've already, I've already gone for you. You don't have to go because I went. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you know what else would be a shame, saint? All this revelation God given us. And we end up in hell. And we standing around here boasting, glory to God, that we know this and know that and know all that stuff. But boy, if we don't walk in what God tell us, we go end right up in hell. That's a bad place. I want you to look at First Peter. Now let's look at the parallel here. First Peter two and twenty. For what glory is it? If when you are buffeted for your faults, you take it patiently. But if when you do well, if you are holy and suffer for it, you take it patiently. This is acceptable unto God. Wow, Jesus, boy, I tell you. God said when you are good, when you are holy, when, when you are righteous and, and you're buffeted, glory to God, and, and reviled and and, and, and just men just do all manner of evil against you. God said, that's acceptable. I ordered that. Hallelujah. Y'all hearing God? I ordered that. That's supposed to happen. Are you hearing God? It's supposed to happen. Praise you, Jesus. Listen to what he says here. He says, for even here unto were you what? Called. Because Christ also suffered for us. That in a minute. See, Peter, one thing about it, you want to know about suffering, Peter tell you. That brother had a that brother had a revelation on suffering. Peter said, now, even here unto were you what? He said, not only were you called to come out of sin. Not only were you called to walk in the power of the resurrection, but you were also called to suffer. This part of the gospel, this is part of your salvation. You don't do this part, you still don't make it. Are you hearing God? This is, this is, part, of, this is part of what you were called to be. This is part of what you are. It takes this to make it in. This is not something for you to be offended about. Because someone did you wrong. So, you were fashioned for them to do you wrong. Because when they do you wrong and you, do, you, you, you be the Christ that you're supposed to be, that's when they see him. But when you act the way they act, glory to God, and you retaliate, they never see him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's make this very clear. For even here unto were you called. Because Christ, now listen to what he said. Now look at that colon there. You see that colon? He's going to explain why you were called to suffer. And we're not taking this out of the Bible. Like that king did years ago. Amen. Took a pen knife and cut a cut scriptures out because he, he wasn't, he didn't like them. 
One of the guys in the Old Testament did that. Get rid of that one. Hallelujah. We're not going to do that. This is part of our salvation. He says, even here unto where you call, colon, let me explain why. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. Woo. The sufferings of Christ are our example. And we, we might, people see, people put Christ way over there. He did that, so we wouldn't have to do that. He said, but I did that as an example for you. I walked in all that suffering so you would, so you would see what you got to do. My suffering is an example for you. Are you, are you hearing God? See, how many preachers tell us that? They didn't tell us that. They did not tell us that, Brenda. They didn't tell us that, that Christ's suffering was our example. We, we, just, we, we made him unique. He was unique. The only unique thing about it was that he was sinless and died for the sins of the whole world. But he said, as I suffer, guess what? You're going to suffer too. He said, they did it to the green tree. What do you think they're going to do to the dry one? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Amen. Glory to God. All right. He said, now these ye shall follow. Watch this now. Leaving us an example that ye should Follow his steps. And he got another colon. Let me show you his steps. <laughs> Glory to God. Who did no sin, step one. Remain holy. Don't commit sin. Neither was God found in his mouth. Stop speaking evil of people. Stop talking about people and putting a slant on it. Come on now. Stop tr subtly trying to sway people against someone else. Stop bringing schism in the body. Get rid of the God. Get rid of the iniquities. Glory to God. Get rid of the, I don't like her. I don't like him. Get rid of that. We're all in the same body. We're all in the same body. Even the unsaved don't have God in your mouth about them. One thing about it, glory to God, I remember we were talking to, to Tanya, glory to God, and Tanya was talking to us, and, and, and she was sharing with the young people how, glory to God, she ministered the, the word of God. And some, and some people came into the church that were caught up in the, in the things that she was ministering. They were caught up in it. But the young lady that was caught up in it got saved, full of the Holy Ghost. Saved. Life changed. Glory to God. Amen. And glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm just so blessed by this. I'm, I'm just so blessed. Amen. Uh, you know, glory to God. She got a testimony. This young lady got a testimony. Amen. She got, she got a testimony. You don't mind, Darlene. You don't, you don't mind me just a little bit of your testimony? Praise the Lord. When Darlene came into this, 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 this place, Tanya was, was, was teaching she and Belinda were teaching. They were teaching. Glory to God. On, 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 on alternative lifestyles and, and whatnot. And, when, and, and when, when I met Darlene, Darlene was, was like, Darlene was. <laughs> and I remember we were we, at one of the world conferences, we playing some Swiss. 
Darlene was playing. She, she was playing some whist, and she was sitting down. And, and that leg was cocked way up here, and her arm on like that. I said, oh, Jesus. What? Is, what, what, what? You know, she was, she was, she was, the enemy had used her body for his, to fulfill his desires. And Tanya kept preaching. And she kept preaching away. She didn't stop preaching on alternative lifestyle because they came in and was obviously, but there was something about the way she preached. There was no guile in it. Come on, Come on somebody. There was no guile in it. There was no guile in it. And, 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 and even though you're preaching against what I am, I, I can feel your love coming through the message. Glory to God. I can feel that. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, that child come in looking like a man, like, like she was more man than she was woman. Praise you, Jesus. And I remember coming to Fort Lauderdale, and, and she had to take me to the airport. She rode with us to the airport, or rode from the airport, one or the other. Glory to God. And she said, she said, Dr. Banks, when you come back now, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to be more girly. <laughs> she, said, she said, but... Um, you guys got to show me. Y'all got to show me. I don't know nothing about that. So y'all got to show me. I don't know nothing about no makeup and, and no dumb dresses and all that stuff. She said, y'all got to teach me that. Let me tell you something, Sam. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, if you preach it with gal, that never would have happened. She'd have just known that you, that you see me walk in now, now you're throwing off on me. Now you, ju you, just, you just got your message now because you're looking at me. Come on, somebody. That's why we can't preach with God. We can't even talk with God. Glory to God. We can't talk with God. And stand up, darling. Look at her now. This, this girl is so beautiful. Praise the Lord. Woo! 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 <laughs> Glory to God. I watched, I watched, I watched that, and I said, now that's the power that's in the word of God. That's the power of the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody look up God. What does Webster say about it? What does it say, Star? Insidious cunning in attaining a goal, crafty or artful deception, mm -hmm. duplicity. Mm -hmm. Cunningly saying stuff that's deceptive. You know, you're supposed to be doing one thing, but you're sending a signal. Huh? Talking sideways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. Implicating things that, yeah, innuendos. Y y you know? Hmm? Vain words. Amen. And, 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 and people, let me tell you something. People that's in sin have the devil in them, and the devil knows his devices. Come on, somebody. He knows his devices even when a saint is using them. So that's why sinners know when you love them and when you don't. They, they know, come on somebody, they know they're not crazy. Amen. Every human being has a need for love. We were created that way. Glory to God. And that's why love is the greatest weapon. Love can reach folks when nothing else can. Love will reach them. Come on somebody. Glory to God. And I want to commend Tanya, Pastor Tanya. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. I, I, am, I am so proud of her. Someone was telling me last night, said, Tanya is a godly woman. Said, Doc, your daughter is a godly woman. Says so she give you godly counsel. 
She doesn't give you her opinion. She's going to tell you what God said. Glory to God. That just blessed me so much. That just blessed me so much. Glory to God. Amen. It made me feel like a maid, but glory to God, I did something right. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> glory to God. Amen. Well, I'm proud of you, baby. I'm proud. That's my firstborn. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. That's, that's my firstborn. Amen. And that Tanya is a pastor. Now, Tanya is a pastor. Glory to God. Is Tanya a pastor, Fort Lauderdale? <laughs> Woo! That's a pastor. Glory to God. You know, Johnny May, remember how hard it was to get her into that pastorate? Yo, she there now. The boy trying to get her there. Oh, mama, this, that's just something mama want me to do. Man. Mama just want me to do that. Man. I don't think God called me to be no pastor. Daddy, I don't know if that, that ain't none of God. That's just mama. Mama want me to be a Glory to God. I can't preach for you and I can't run that church for you. Amen. Glory to God. Your gift make room for you. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. I tell you, I'm a blessed woman. <laughs> blessed. Amen. And saints, raise up your children in the way they ought to go. Because I remember when they were children and, and other children would, would, you know, like they might get into altercations and whatnot. And we, our time was at the dinner table. And we, I would sit them down at the dinner table and they said, and this one messing with me and yeah, 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 yeah. And I would tell them, you can't, you can't, you, you can't be like that. You can't, you, you, you can't go out there with vent, vengeance and, you know, you got to love that person. And I would make them stop at the dinner table and pray for the people that was, that they had problems with. We would pray at the dinner table. That's, you know, we, we, we were a family that ate together. Well, I don't, all that foolishness, you, you coming in eating one time, this one coming in eating and all that. I didn't play that. We going to sit down together and we ate because I want to know what's been going on today. Amen. Glory to God. I want to know what happened today, what you're dealing with. So if there's anything we need to take before the Lord, amen, we're going to take it as a family. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And, and I, I'm still like that. Ain't that right, Anesta Daniel? Amen. Glory to God. Yannick, amen. Don't come in here tonight. We, we, we finna eat. Where, wait, where's Yannick? He downstairs. I'm telling him to get up here. Amen. We're going to sit down together, and we're going to eat, and we're going to talk about the Lord. Amen. amen. We're going to talk about the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Raise them up the way they're supposed to go. Praise you, Jesus. Make sure your children respect the principles of God. Amen. Teach them the principles. And that's why, then if you want to know somebody that don't have no God, that's Tanya Thomas. Tanya don't have no God. Michael Thomas, they don't have no God. No, they don't have no God. You know, when Mike said he liked to walk in a room and be all right with everybody, that's real. That's real. That's real. I taught him, glory to God, Michelle was, Michelle was kind of quick, you see. Michelle was kind of quick. Michelle said, y'all just said, yeah. Beat her, Tanya, beat her. If you don't, <laughs> I'll do it for you. <laughs> you know? But Michelle heard those principles. And they are a children, they are a, ch a children, a set of children that don't, she don't have it in her heart to just deliberately hurt you. Just do stuff to just, you know, to be malicious against you and just, just do stuff to just hurt you. You, you, you know? And, and, and I tell you something else. They can't hold stuff. They can't hold, they, they, they don't hold stuff. They don't hold, they don't, they, you know, they, they, they not want to just hold grudges against you. You, you. you know? Praise the Lord. And that's, that's because the principles of Christ were placed in them as children. I made them honor God's principles. These are the principles for your life. This is what you live by. <clears throat> and I want to insert something here too. Some of you ladies have been divorced. Or your husband might have left you. 
and going on, might be even with another woman. Don't teach your children to hate that man. Don't teach your children to hate that man. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh-uh. My children saw some, some ugly things sometimes, glory to God, when their father left, and, and mm -mm, we don't talk bad about him. That's your daddy. That's your daddy. That's your father. Glory to God, and you honor him, and you respect him no matter what. You honor and respect him. Praise the Lord. My children can never tell you that I ever tried to turn their, their minds against their father. Never, never, ever. In fact, my daughters tell me, and, and Michelle and her daddy was tight. They were really tight like that. And, and Shell would say, Mama, I didn't know how you did that. She said, you just, what, you know, you just kept us in love with daddy. Amen. No matter what we saw. Glory to God. You kept us in love with him. When he was going on, you kept us in love with him. When you're over on the other side of town, you kept us loving daddy. Amen. That's your father. Glory to God. Don't turn your children against their father. Glory to God. That's their father. No matter what he's doing, it's still their father. And they have a right to love their father. Come on. If you and him having problems, that's you and him. The children were not responsible for that. Glory to God. Let the children love their father. Come on, ladies. I just needed to put that in there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Listen, listen to this now. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed, for ye were as sheep gone astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your what? Souls. Hallelujah. The church is the generation of Christ. Those who walk in his footsteps will declare him. Did he not tell us to declare him? Who's going to declare his generation? We're his generation. Only the people that walk in Christ's footsteps, follow him into suffering, will declare who he is. It is through our suffering in the flesh that we show forth the power of Christ. Do you know it took power for, for Christ to be whipped all night long? Beard plucked, spat on, stripped naked, nailed to a tree. And then say, Father, don't lay this sin to their charge. That took power. Father, they don't know what they're doing. Don't lay this sin to them. Forgive them. That took power. That took power. See, the bottom line is, if we can't do that with him in us, we can't make it in. If we lay sin to the charge of our offenders, we are not worthy of the kingdom. Because when you do that, you are denying Christ that's in you. You're denying Christ. Christ has no problem loving his enemies. But when you when you usurp authority and said, I forgive, but I won't forget. You haven't forgiven. When you, when you, when you deal with people with a long handled spoon, that's iniquity. You're denying Christ. You're denying Christ. Hallelujah. You're denying him. Glory to God. He said, the scriptures tell us, we got to follow in his footsteps. Don't think his suffering was unique in the sense that 
it's off limits to us. We are appointed to suffer. Let's move a little bit further. Jesus came to the earth, the son of the living God. Did he not? He had power over all the power of Satan. Not just a little bit, all of it. He could heal the sick, raise the dead, walk on water. No matter what men thought of him, they were unable to do him any harm before the time. No matter what they thought. When he preached his first message, they tried to stone him. Amen? But he just kind of disappeared through the crowd. Amen. Because they couldn't, they, couldn't, they couldn't harm him before his time. Amen? Glory to God. Satan even testified that God had given his angels charge over him so that he couldn't even stump his toe. But this was all about to change. All of this was about to change. The hour had come for him to submit to evil and cruel marking. All of this, walking on the water and raising up dead folk and healing folk that couldn't walk for 38 years and all of that, about to change. You got to submit to something you've never submitted to. You never had to submit. Watch this now. This is important. You never had to submit to evil before. You God. Come on, you God. You God. You punish evildoers. Huh? You shorten their days. You destroy them. You destroy whole cities. You wipe out whole seeds. Whole nationality of people. Nobody can do you any harm. You God. God Almighty. You the one declared. Are there any other gods out there? Let me hear you. Where are you? He Hello? Didn't hear anything. Said there's none like you. But oh, now you've taken on, you've gotten yourself inside of a human body. You've made yourself a little lower than the angels. You're even lower than the angels for the suffering of death. And now the time has come for you to submit to evil and cruel people that can do whatever they want to do to you. And this is your own design. You sure you want to go through with this? Hmm? Because now you're not going to, you know, you're God and all in the, in, in the flesh, but you're going to feel everything they do to you. Just like us. Don't we feel what they do to us? You're going to feel it. Don't think that, 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 that he made himself immune. He didn't feel him plucking his beard. When they pull, you, can you imagine what it felt like for somebody to pull your beard out? To take a, a crown of thorns and gouge it down into your skull? Glory to God. <clears throat> to whip you until the, your bones show. Can you imagine what that felt like? He said, all my joints are out of place. They pulled all my joints out of place. Hallelujah. Scratched him wide. Glory to God. Can you imagine what that felt like to the flesh? The soul suffered before it died. It suffered. Glory to God. He felt every pain, every lash, and every torment. In hell. He felt all of that. Now see he said. This, the scripture said. This is about to change now. Because you got to submit. For this cause you came into the world. Right? Look at Hebrews 5. Who in the days of his flesh. Meaning during the time that he was walking on the earth. When he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears, because he knew what he was about to face, unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he what? Feared. 
scared. He's about to experience something he's never experienced before. Because sin is about to separate him from God. Sin. He's about to take on sin. Sin is going to be laid on that body. And because of the sin that is laid on this, we got to remember this. Because of the sin that was placed on the body, the body had to be chastised. There would have been no need for the chastening of the flesh had it flesh not been the place of the sin. Are you hearing God? So the flesh had to be chastised because that's where the soul sinned at. The soul sinned, used its flesh to sin. So sin being laid on his flesh was a similitude of the sin that we had committed. So the sin was laid on his flesh, and now the flesh got to be chastened. That's why before he went to the cross, the angels of the Lord came. They came to strengthen him, to bear him up to give him some strength so he could carry that cross. Because he was not just carrying the cross, he was carrying the weight of all of our sin as well. Glory to God. And so the angels had to come and minister to him, glory to God, to make him strong enough to bear this, this burden that he had. So the flesh had to be chastened because it was the place of sin. Are you hearing God? He had to pay for our sin by the chastisement of the lash. Glory to God. Are you working with me? Glory to God. Watch this. Though he was a son, are you a son of God? Listen to that, Paul. Paul had a revelation of this thing. Yes, he was the son of God. That's what Paul is saying. Though he was the son of God, yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered. Wait a minute. He's the son of God. This bears witness with what I just said. He was the son of God. He was always holy. He was always holy. He was always holy. But he was always supreme. Who could hurt him? Who could slap him around? Who could mock him and get away with it? Nobody. He was supreme, the supreme being. But now he's put himself in a position to submit to cruelty. He's submitting to the cruelty of men that he made. Men that he said, you know what you are? You know what you look like to me when I'm in heaven? You look like little grasshoppers. I'm a God that, that, that sits, on, sits on a throne in heaven and I can prop my feet up on the earth. I can use the earth for a footstool. So you know what you look like. And But now this great God is in a body. Uh -huh. This person from the Godhead has stepped inside of a human body and he's going to submit now to cruelty of people that he created. Sinful people now, they've become so sinful. And they're going to do whatever they wish with him. They, can you imagine submitting to something? You, you created this and you got power over them. You got power. Glory to God. Jesus said, glory to God, if I needed help, I just talk to my dad and he'll send 12 legions of angels. What you going to do then? What you going to do when even one angel show up? My dad has sent me 12 legions if I need them. Come on now. This, look at this power. But I, I'm on a mission here. In order to redeem man, I got to become a man. I got to be as he is. He's, he's a partaker of flesh and blood. I got to partake of flesh and blood. I got to be made a little lower than the angel so that I can die. And look at the manner of death. I not only got to die, I got to be chastened. Chastened, chastised. The flesh got to be chastised. 
Oh, glory to God. Look at this now. Even though he was a son, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. You know what that means? You all of that. But can you obey God? Can you walk in meekness? Power. Put your power under control while these things are happening to you. Hmm? Can you hold fast huh, to your love for man? Can you still love man even though he's spitting on you, pulling your beard, beating you within an inch of your life? Will you still love him at the end of that? Will you, or will you get in the middle of this and later for this him and just wipe them all out? Will you submit? Will you obey God? You said, nevertheless, if it's your will, let it be done. So now, okay, I'm letting it be done. But will you still obey? Because I'm not going to take your power from you. I'm not going to take it from you. You see, you, you, huh? But the Bible says in Ephesians, the first chapter, God trusted him. God trusted Christ. He trusted. Holy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He trusted him. And he, he didn't back down. I got power. I, it, 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 when, when, when Pilate told him, said, you know, you... Yeah, I got, I, got, I got power to save your life or take it. Whoa, well, whoa, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Let's get one thing straight here. You don't have no power my daddy didn't give you. But come on now. How the creature going to say to the creator, you got power? <laughs> come on. All things were made by Jesus Christ for him and by him. And you got power to do what? He proved that when they came to arrest him. Who are you looking for? Jesus. We're looking for Jesus. I am he. They fall out like dead men. He just did that to show them you don't take my life now. I got to give it to you. Come on, somebody. I got to give it to you. you, you, you. I don't want you to think now that you... you you taking some. You got so much power over me. You don't have no power over me. I am walking in meekness. I am keeping my power under control so that I don't wipe you out. I am being obedient even unto death. I'm submitting to the will of the Father. This is his will. I was righteous when I came. Now, will I be righteous in suffering? Do you hear? Will I be righteous in suffering? Hmm? Will I be righteous when men are beating on me and, and spitting on me and saying all manner of evil when they are mocking me? I'm hanging on the cross and some, some nut saying, if you, if you save other folks, save yourself. Come on down off the cross. See, see, that'd have been me. I probably let me show him something. <laughs> I'd have said, Lord, please let me get off this cross just for a minute, just to show him something. And then I get back on it. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. Meekness. Meekness. The Bible says he came lowly. Lowly, not making a reputation for himself. Who was he glorifying? God. He's saying this God is in this body. Remember, God stayed in that body till he got on the cross. Glory to God. And he stayed on that cross from 9 o'clock in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. God was still in that body. Mm -hmm. Then he said, Lord, I give up the ghost. Gave up the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But with God in it, he could submit. With God in him, he could submit to cruelty. With God in him, he could submit to persecution. 
to being reviled. With God in him, he could take it. With God in him, he came out with no guile. With God in him, no retribution. With God in him, no iniquity. With God in him, he retained his love for the human race. Glory to God, simply because of God. He said, now these are the footsteps you got to walk in. If you're going to redeem man, if you're going to be that kinsman redeemer that shows them the way to Christ, come on somebody, show them the way to God, you got to walk in that meekness. You got to have that, that, that retaliatory spirit out of you. You got to walk in the power of your Christ. Glory to God. You got to keep it. Glory to God when, 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 when people spit on you. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. When they spit on you, you got to still love them. When they hate you, you got to love them. When they talk about you, you got to love them. When they do all manner of evil against you, you got to maintain the love. Isn't this the step that he walked in? He said, we got to walk in his steps. Huh? To prove. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Let's see what we're proving. Watch this. Look at that ninth verse. Start so reading that ninth verse so they'll know that it's in the Bible. This, Hebrews and 5 and 9. And being made perfect. Wait a minute, this is Jesus. What are you talking about made perfect? Look at this level here. Remember he came as a man. Right? Now, but he started out God. Right? Being made perfect is going to take suffering in the flesh to make a perfect man. Come on, come on. There's no perfection without suffering. It's going to take suffering in the flesh to make a perfect man. Are you here? To prove that you're a perfect man, you got to suffer in the flesh. That's the revelation of your perfection. That's what it is. It's the revelation of your perfection. Suffering in the flesh. Being made perfect. He became the offer of eternal salvation unto all them that do what? All them that obey him, that walk in his steps, that walk according to the will of God in every situation, whether it means persecution or death. That's perfection. Because it's easy to be perfect. You God. <laughs> you God with power over everything. Huh? Anything you don't like, all you got to do is blink at it. Glory to God. But now to, 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 to take on a criteria that says that you got to take, come into humanity, come into to, to a human body rather, come into a human, human flesh, flesh and blood, glory to God, and, and submit to these, these little creatures that you said look like grasshoppers to you. You got to submit to them and let them do all manner of evil to you. Can you obey now, Jesus? And I'm not going to take your power from you. You can come down off the cross if you want to. You can call for me to send that 12 legion. Come on now. I'm not taking your power. You can zap them. I'm not taking no power from you. Will you submit now in persecution? Will you be holy? Will you obey me? In the hands of cruel men, will you still obey me? Now, in doing so, 
he became the captain of our salvation. First Peter 5 and 10, what does it say? Page 23. But the God of all grace, mm -hmm. who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. He called us into his eternal glory. That eternal glory is the Holy Ghost. That's an eternal spirit. He got us there through Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. After that, ye have suffered a while. Uh-oh. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Uh-oh. After you have suffered a while. Come on. After you have suffered. If Jesus was made perfect by the things he suffered, what is God saying? Yeah, I made you a perfect, uh, I made you perfect in as far as righteousness is concerned, but now prove it. Prove it. Because the devil is gonna accuse you. I can I cannot, I cannot not give the devil access to you. Because he's gonna, he's he's the accuser. He's going to say, you just serving me because, glory to God, you living on a flower bed of ease. Nothing, nothing, I don't let nothing touch you. That's what he said about Job, didn't it? And didn't the scripture say Job was given for an example to the church? Glory to God. What did he say about Job? Yeah, Job's serving you because you won't let me get to him. You got a hedge around him. Come on, somebody. And he said, that's our example. Glory to God. So he says now, glory to God. He said, after you have suffered, amen, a while, glory to God. <laughs> you what? I make you perfect. See, because now I'm proving that, yes, I made you perfect. You have a sinless life. You have a sinless body. You are created holy and righteous but can you maintain that righteous in, righteousness in suffering can you maintain it in persecution can you maintain it when when i throw you into the hands of cruel people people that do you wrong people that intend to do you wrong people that just don't like you simply because they just don't like the way you wear your hair people just don't like you because glory to god you may have a little something that they don't have people that just don't like you because you're saved I'm going to put you in their hand. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make you work for that boss that, glory to God, that, that always persecuting you, always making you do more than everybody else. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to put you in that, in, in, that, in that situation. Can you obey me then? You obey me as long as I'm doing good, as long as everything is good, everything is hunky-dory. But I'm going to stir up some stuff. I'm going to put you through some trials. I'm going to put you through some tribulation. I'm going to make some folks don't like you. I'm going to put the devil right there in the house with you. Come on, somebody. I'm going to open the door for him. Now, when I open the door for the devil to come in your house, glory to God, are you going to still love me? Are you going to still obey me? Are you still going to say glory to God? You've been made perfect. Let me see. That's what the devil is saying. Let me see. Let me see. You said Job is a perfect man. Did you know he said that about Job? It's about Job is perfect. Yeah, you say, he said, yeah, he's perfect because you don't let nobody touch him. Glory to God, but you give me access to him. I make him curse you to your face. And that's what the devil is saying about us. You let me get to that church. I'll make them turn their back on you. I'll make them deny you. Glory to God, all you got to do is take the hedge down and let me get to him. Somebody say the devil is a liar. Somebody ought to somebody ought to just jump up a minute and make the devil mad. Say, I got to suffer. Come on. I got to suffer. I got to suffer. I got to suffer. Come on, I got to suffer. Because I can, in suffering, I, oh, I glorify my God. Come on, I glorify God. When I suffer, I glorify God. I 
Hallelujah. Woo! Let me show you something. Let me show you something. See? See? See where God trying to take us? God trying to take us? He's trying to give us a testimony. He's trying to give us a testimony. He's trying to give us the same testimony he gave Paul. Paul said, good God Almighty, everywhere I go, glory to God, they whooping me, they beating me. Glory to God, they're throwing me in prison. Lord, if you just move this, this, this thing that's sent to buffet me, if you just move this angel that was sent, this satanic angel that followed me everywhere I go, stirring up trouble for me, if you just get rid of it, I could preach the gospel. I could save a lot more souls if you just keep me out of prison sometime. Glory to God, don't, they man, Paul was beaten with rods. Paul was, y'all don't realize that Paul was actually put in the lion's, then, amen, Paul said, Jesus delivered him out of the lion's mouth. Come on, somebody. Down in Ephesus, at Ephesus, glory to God, the, 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 a lion had him in his mouth, and Jesus delivered him out. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Paul said, all this work I'm doing, I could do so much more. Glory to God, I could do so much more if you just move this buffeting spirit. Glory to God. But Jesus said, Paul, Paul, let me tell you something. My grace is sufficient because when you weak, when your flesh is buffeted, when your flesh is weak, that's when I'm strong. That's why you do so much now because when you're weak, my power is resting upon you. Come on and shout glory, somebody. You want an anointing? You want your life to be anointed? Be willing to suffer. Somebody said, somebody said, Doc, I don't know how you took that. This one did that to you, and this one did that to you. And you're still giving them. You're still loving them. You're still giving them a chance. Glory to God. That's why, glory to God, you know why I do it? Glory to God, so I can walk like I'm walking today with an anointing, with an anointing on my life. See, I couldn't preach like this if I wasn't willing to suffer, if I wasn't willing to take something, if I wasn't willing to love my enemies. I wouldn't have no message. Glory to God, it wouldn't be real to me. But because it's real to me, I can make you believe it. Come on, somebody. See, I done been knocked down. I've been knocked down. I done been spit on. I done been spit in my face. Glory to God. I done, I done been through all of that. I done been where, glory to God, amen, people shake hands with my husband and put their phone number in his, in his hand while they're shaking his hand. Glory to God, go home and they got their phone numbers in his pocket. Glory to God, come on, somebody. I done been there, glory to God. I done been there where, glory to God, I done been drugged behind cars. And, oh, y'all don't hear me. Praise the Lord. And the people that did it to me, glory to God, I prayed for them. And you know what? They got saved. They got saved and full of the Holy Ghost. I done been there when I done seen a woman in bed with my husband. Glory to God. And that same woman, glory to God, amen, is saved and in the body of Christ today because I kept loving her. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I'm talking about an anointing, an anointing. You can't preach this thing unless you're willing to go through something. You got to go through something. Old people used to say, if you can take it, you can make it. Saints, I wouldn't have an anointing on my life today 
if I didn't love the people of God, if I didn't love those who hated me, glory to God, hallelujah, people, people have, glory to God, hallelujah, I've been choked till I thought the next breath going to be my last. And when people come in, when, when people come in to rescue me, hallelujah, my son Blade was one of them. And I remember sitting there. And Blade, he right there, Blade came in got down in front of me on his knees. He said, Doc, just tell me. Did he hit you? Did he hit you? That's one day I lied through my teeth. Hallelujah. Because I knew that if I'd have just said even act like I was going to say yeah. See, he wasn't quite delivered from it right there. Jesus. <laughs> and he had his partner with him, Mike. That combination, they loved me. And I knew if I had so much as blink, it would have been over. Somebody going, somebody going. You're not willing to take nothing. You're not willing to take nothing. You're not willing to suffer. And it wasn't no hard thing. You know why? Because in suffering, there's a comforter. There's a comforter. And that comforter, the Holy Ghost, is what caused you to continue loving in the midst of the trial. Hallelujah. The comforter. Oh, he just, he give you peace. He give you peace. Glory to God. Sometimes you, when people are doing you wrong, you got to remember who you are and what your purpose is in their life. Lord, I got to hold my peace. I got to hold on to my peace so I won't retaliate. Hallelujah. And you know what it did, Coco? It made me strong. It made me strong. You don't see me falling out, glory to God, and dropping out at the drop of every time something happened. Glory to God, I'm out for the count. Nah, it makes you strong, glory to God. And every time something, the more severity, the more severe the suffering, the greater the anointing. When you go through it righteously. And let me warn you about something. Learn how to judge yourself. Because the deception would be somebody do something to you and you don't retaliate. But that don't mean your heart is pure. That don't mean your heart is pure. Because you could be raging in your heart. So when people do something to me, I ask myself, how do you really feel? How do you really feel about this person? What emotion going on on the inside of you? What's the emotion? Because that's your real, that's your real spiritual location. Your emotion is your spiritual location. Do you still have the love of Christ? Because we can say, oh, Lord, I didn't do this, and I did, oh, she did this, and I didn't do that. And he did this, and I didn't do that. But what were you feeling? And I asked myself one time, when a lady did something to me, somebody did something to me. And I said, Lord, I said, nah, Mary, Mary, do you love this person enough to lay down your life for them if necessary? 
that was the acid test. Do you still love them enough to lay down your life? And you know how I judged it? I looked at my children. I looked at my children. The deep love I have for my children. Mothers love their children. If they are mothers. Everything that had a baby ain't a mother. But if you're a mother, you love your child. And when one of my children are hurting, and one of them is hurting, I hurt. I hurt. When one of my children hurting, I hurt. When one of them is, is, is going through something, and I, I, that bothers me, that hurts me. Glory to God, that, you know, it's been, it's been a, 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 a trial for me that Bishop Michelle has been diagnosed the way she's been diagnosed, glory to God. That's been a trial because that's my baby, that's my child, glory to God. And, and when she's in pain or discomfort, I'm hurting. I hurt. If they fall short in, and if Tanya falls short in something, that bother me. I hurt. Because I want the best for my children. If Mike falls short, that hurt me. Because I want them to make it into heaven. I want us to go in as a family. And I would do anything for my children. I would die for my children. I would. I'd take their place in death. Wouldn't have to think about it. I wouldn't have to think about that. Glory to God. I would prefer them to live. Glory to God. Glory to God. And I ask myself that same question about my offender. Do I still love them enough to give my life for them? And if I can't say yes, Dusty, I done missed the mark. But I got to be honest. I got to be honest, Ricky. Will I die for you? Will I take your place? Will I take your place, Mark? That's got to be real. It can't be just some show, something you just saying for show. It's got to be real. Suffering is a part of my salvation. And so is death. If I have to die, that's part of it. My Savior died so that others could live. That's part of it, Jody. That's part of it. That's part of it. When you leave here, when you leave this conference, I want you to be different. I want you to be different. God brought you here. God brought you here to show you that you could be what he called you to be. He brought you here. He's remaking He's remaking your mindset. Yes, he is. He's thinking different now. Yeah. Some things you don't just say, forget it. Some things you don't even want to deal with no more. Some things you don't let go of. Don't go back and get them. God brought you here to save your soul. To save you, to save you to the utmost. I know you're full of the Holy Ghost, but he brought you here to save your soul. To change your mindset. And I'm glad you obeyed it. I'm glad you came. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. There are many scriptures... There are many scriptures that you could read. One is, write these down. First Thessalonians 3 and 3. 
I don't know if they're in your book. Amen. I think we did Hebrews 2 and 10. We did that. Um, I think we did Timothy also. Hallelujah. Revelation 2 and 10. Write these down. First Peter 4 and 13. Let's go there to that one right now. I want you to read that one out loud for us and get it on the tape. First Peter. Let's see the mindset of suffering. Twelve and thirteen. Beloved, uh -huh. think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Uh -huh. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when the glory shall be revealed, ye might be glad also with exceeding joy. Now, watch this. I want you to understand something about this scripture here. In as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, um, come here, preacher. Remember, Christ is in this flesh, right? But, the, but you're in it too, because you're in the spirit, right? This flesh is being persecuted because of Christ. Where, where's my soul? Is my soul available? Oh, my soul is on the camera, so come, Yannick, be the soul for me, please. Amen. So Christ is dwelling inside of this flesh, but you're dwelling in the spirit of Christ, right? And everything that this flesh feels, you feel. Did we not establish that the soul feels any physical pain? It's the soul that mourns because the body is being desecrated, amen? Being afflicted. The soul mourns for the affliction, glory to God. So this this body that has Christ in it is being persecuted simply because Christ is in it. This body is holy. Christ is holy. Christ is doing, going about his father's business. You're here as a witness, right? But you're also a partaker of his sufferings. So if, if Christ is now, glory to God, performing the works of God and men get offended like they did before because of the works of God, you're going to feel that offense. You're a partaker of that because you're in here with him. <coughs> Are you hearing me? That's the fellowship. That's the fellowship. You're a partaker of his sufferings. He's not suffering alone. You're suffering with him. Are you hearing that? Because you're in the same body with him. Even though you're clothed in his spirit, you're still in this flesh. And you feel everything that he feels. Amen? You feel it all. But he, and, and there was a scripture that I really wanted to bring to attention. I lost my... Uh, uh, St. John 16, 33. I, I, I want to show you something here. This is important. That is it, isn't it, Bishop? Yeah. 
Listen, let's back up to um, let's back up to 30, 32. Be, 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 does Johnny, maybe you want to read that? Oh. Or star? Behold, mm -hmm. the hour cometh, mm -hmm. yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Mm -hmm. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Where? In the world. In the world we are going to have what? Tribulation. tribulation. Mm -hmm. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Listen to what he said. You're, in, you, I'm, you're going to be in this world, but you're not of it. And because you're born of God, there's going to be much tribulation, much trials, many trials. Tribulation is simply a collection of trials. You, there's going to be many, many trials coming your way. He says, but I have already overcome the world. No matter what they bring, I've already overcome it. So what is he saying? He's saying, you now, so just be the witness. Just do what I tell you to do. Say what I tell you to say. Remain in obedience. Remain in obedience because I've overcome the world. In other words, there's nothing that they can do that I have not already overcome. If you just remain in obedience, you too will overcome. Do you see what he said? You have entered into the fellowship of my suffering. So don't now, don't retaliate. Don't, don't uh, give reproach for reproach. Don't, don't take on an offense and, and, and become an offense. Amen? Don't you do that because I've already overcome all offenses. I've already overcome all persecution. All you got to do is be in submission to me. Just be in submission to me. And you know what? That, you know why he says that? Because if you're in submission to God in the midst of tribulation, you have the comforter. And, and, and purpose is more powerful than pain. You have a comforter. The Holy Ghost will comfort you. And, and, and what does that comfort mean? It'll cause you to retain your love for your offender. You will not animosity. You will not feel any animosity for that person. You'll, you'll, you will be pitiful toward them because that's what he is. He's pitiful. And he said, remain in fellowship with me and you will overcome because I've already overcome. Are you understanding fellowship of his suffering now? You're fellowshipping with him because you're there with him in the suffering. And Jesus' suffering didn't stop at the resurrection. In fact, it began again with the church. When he formed his church, the suffering started all over again in us. It's just suffer he's suffering now in different bodies. Remember this. Let me, give, let me bring you some scriptures to your remembrance, and you can be, may, may take a note of them. Re, re, uh, remember, thank you, fellas. Remember when, when uh, Paul said Paul was on his way to Damascus? To persecute the saints? What did Jesus say? He said, Saul. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? He was throwing saints into prison. He was whipping saints. He was persecuting the church. But Jesus said, you persecuting me. You're persecuting me. Now, are you there? So he said, glory to God, I've already overcome that persecution. So that why do you think these people, see, they understood this. The early church understood this. That's why Christians were able, they understood the fellowship of his suffering. That's why when Nero was persecuting the church, glory to God, Christians were able to walk inside the arena, being fed to lions. They were nailed to 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 to. to to pose and, and, and doshed in, in, in fuel and made a human torch. All they had to do was deny their faith. All they had to do was deny and say, I'm not, no, I'm not no Christian. They, had, they watched their children being tortured. 
They used to take the little kids and, and sew them up into animal skins and then soak the animal skin in blood and then feed it to bears. And the bear, he smelled the blood, he goes crazy and he's ripping that thing apart or bears and tigers, they ripping, ripping that thing apart to get to what's in there. Like they, they, they're killing another animal. Christians watched their children go through that, and some of them went through it. Why were they able to? Because, glory to God, Jesus said, I've already suffered all things. Huh? I will not allow more to be put on you than you can bear. Huh? And if you remain, if you remain in submission to me, if you just remain in submission to me, you'll be comforted. You'll be comforted. You won't get angry. You won't blame God. You won't, you, you, you will not be angry or, or, what's the word? Offended with God because of your suffering. You'll know that you're glorifying God because somebody watching you die for Jesus. You're glorifying God. How can people die like this? How can people hold fast to that faith? What is it those people have? That they willingly, willingly suffer. Because they have a comforter. They have a comforter on the inside. And they know what their purpose is. They know their purpose. Let me tell you something, saints. If you don't, if you don't stick with the word, you can't, you can't do this. You got to sit up under the word. You got, to, you got to constantly be fed the word to keep you strong in the faith. Otherwise, there are trials that will come that will cause you to deny the faith. Trials will come and cause you to sin before you will suffer. Mm -hmm. There's no one more scripture I want us to read. Bishop McGirt gave it to us. Amen. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Look at... Um, Second Corinthians twelve. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Second Corinthians four. Second Corinthians four. Did we read this? Did we finish reading Saint John? Did we get to thirty three? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's look at Second uh, Corinthians four. Four. Let's. I think it's four. Yeah. And um, seventh verse starts at the seventh, I guess, to keep it in context. Mm hmm. But, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Mm hmm that the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. Okay. We are troubled on every side. Trouble on every side. Mm -hmm. Yet not distressed. Okay. We are perplexed, mm -hmm. but not in despair. We don't always know what's, what's, what's happening, praise the Lord, but we're not, we're not in despair. We don't, we don't feel forsaken now. Mm-hmm. Persecuted, but mm. not forsaken. Mm -hmm. Cast down, but not destroyed. This is the life of a Christian. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. You see that? Always bearing about in the body his death so that his life can be manifested. Bear, taking it. Peter said in, in, in 1 Peter 4, he said, 
he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. He that has suffered in the flesh is the one that has ceased from sin. Glory to God. Always bearing about in the body. One writer said, I bear the marks of Christ in my flesh. That's Paul, I believe. To show forth his dying, I take it. I take the beatings. I take the persecution. I take the floggings. I take the, the, the trips to prison, the cruel treatment. I take it all. It's, I've been shipwrecked. He said he was in the, in the sea. He'd been shipwrecked three times, and he said he, one time he was in the ocean, floating around out in the ocean a day and a night. I'd probably die from just fear. Praise you, Jesus. I, I, I just, I'd have died just thinking about a shark coming along, eating, eating me. Glory to God. Amen. I just, I, glory to God. I just been thinking, oh, Lord, I'm going to eat it. If a shark don't get me, a barracuda going to get me, something going to get me. Praise you, Jesus. Float, can you imagine floating around in the ocean all night, all day and all night? I can't even imagine that. Just, just out there trying to, just, I can't even imagine it. Glory to God. And I don't know, I can't tread water. Praise you, Jesus. I, I'm get too tired, too quick, trying to tread water. I know I've been drowned, drowned a long time. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. But with all of that, he said, most gladly I rejoice in my infirmities because I found out something. When my flesh is infirmed, he is strong. His spirit is resting upon it. Glory to God. Jesus walked in that thing. Jesus walked in the glory of God. And see, people like Peter and, 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 and Paul, they were so anointed. Glory to God, walking in that anointing, willing to suffer. I remember Peter was whipped. And the, the, you know, the man preaching done heal folks and heal a man at the gate. And then they, 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 they took him and James or John and, and, and beat him. And then when Peter got back to the meeting, he said, Lord, thank you for counting us worthy to suffer for Christ. That's the testimony God want us to have. He want us to be thankful that we suffer for Christ's sake. Don't see it as an offense. Say, God, you count me worthy to suffer. You chose me to suffer this thing. You handpicked me like you did Job. You handpicked me for this so that I could bring glory to your name. After hearing such a message, after hearing such a message, can we say, I must suffer for Christ. I must suffer to Christ. I got to bring glory to my Christ. I must suffer for Christ. Come on, saints. Hallelujah. Don't let it be an offense. The devil getting mad because, glory to God, the devil, see, he's defeated when you rejoice in suffering. The devil is defeated. Glory to God. He, can't, he has nothing to accuse you with now before the Father because he's been given access and you say, it's all right. It's all right. I'm still, I'm not going to deny my God. I'm going to bring glory to him by suffering. Come on, somebody. Come on, give it up for Jesus. Give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor Tanya. Praise the Lord. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. He's good. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our Savior. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God is good. I will never teach the same. My life will never be the same. Never. Never, never, never. My Lord Jesus. I thank God he counted me worthy to even hear this. My Lord Jesus. 
God is awesome. Amen. Do you love him today? You love him. Amen. Let's worship him in our giving. Amen. We want to thank those of you who are watching online. We pray that you have been blessed by what God is pouring out of heaven. Amen. And we're about to worship him in our giving here in the sanctuary. You too can participate. Simply click on donations. Follow the prompt.